good morning. Good morning, everybody. Um, good, good morning. Uh, well, thank you, Donna, first of all, for, as again, uh, just uh, preparing our hearts uh, to enter in this morning um, on this particular platform. And um, thank you for, um, thank you, Seema, for just opening up your heart and sharing. And, uh, you know, obviously it's, it's solicited, solicited um, a response um, from each, I, I suspect from each and every one of us, though we have not all spoken, but certainly I thank God for a direct response from uh, Keith and uh, Junior in regards to prayer and uh, just uh, encouraging you and Donna encouraging you and um, Raphael um, contributing. You know, um, each day I wake up and uh, I see it as a dawning of a new day. And so, um, you know, even as I was saying to Grace um, yesterday, I said, you know what, what it is, is that unbeknown to me, and we, 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 we're celebrating our 40th anniversary this month, I said, do you notice that everything is happening? Uh, not everything, but, you know, God is new, laying new foundations in the month of August. And uh, I said, you know what? August is the eighth month. Eight means new beginnings. And I said, you know, God is doing a new thing. He's doing a fresh thing. Although our path has been directed down a certain path, a certain way god is every day is a brand new morning his mercies are new every morning and so it's not a matter of uh, looking back but it's a matter of looking forward in terms of what god is gonna open up to us in terms of the expectation of a a new beginning a new day as i said and um so in saying that, I was listening and I'm thinking to myself, yes, things do happen. Things do happen in our lives. But you know what? The one thing that enables me to get over something quicker than anything is not to dwell on it. And uh, Keith uh, alluded to the scripture in uh, Philippians 4, 8. Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are virtuous, whatsoever things are good report, Whatsoever things are excellent, whatsoever, <laughs> anything that is positive, think on those things, you see. At the, and uh, those are the things that I tend to do always. And you see, there's something that um, it's interesting that uh, Junior should say something about wounds. Um, Grace, uh, Grace, um, what did she do? She hurt her finger in a certain way that um, it became bruised. And I've forgotten uh, how she hurt it, but it became bruised. Now, the thing is, I think she either burnt it or something like that, but became bruised. But the thing is, is that it developed a scab. And uh, <laughs> what, I, what I saw her doing is she was always mindful of this particular scab on her finger. What she, instead of allowing nature to take its course, she would do certain things and she would try to doctor it in certain ways. And she would put a plaster on it, not knowing that the plaster that she actually put on it, that she applied, you see, not nature, but she, you know, God will apply things to you and, and it, Without no time at all, it's just healed naturally. She was applying the plaster. When she applied the plaster, it seemed to get become more septic. It, um, it, it, it started to, um, the skin started to raise up more and uh, it just needed so much more attention. And I found her each day taking layers of her finger and I'm thinking, why don't you just allow it to just heal in Jesus name? <laughs> so, so here it is. While she was doing all of this, attending to it, she was attending to it in the way she felt best. She would experience the pain in her finger. She would experience it 
being becoming septic again and it was just taking longer and i just said let it just let it go let it go and the moment she didn't give it so much attention is the quicker that finger healed because you know what she she had to just say you know what i'm not going to put any more plasters on it i'm just going to allow god to heal it in other words in the name of jesus and that's what she did and it with no time at all i looked and thought oh now to tell you the truth i can't even see the scar on her finger it's not noticeable it is not noticeable in other words the scar has gone everything has gone god healed it in his time because she now committed it to the lord and she was trying to minister to it in her own way thinking that her way was best i said just in the name of jesus just give it to the lord give it to the lord he's the healer jesus is the healer and so many times we can take on things where the word of god says cast your cares upon him because he careth for you jesus said my my yoke is easy and my burden is light in other words when you yoke things on jesus he's the one that carries the load you don't have to carry that load of responsibility just cast it on him look at each day as a new beginning when you when you go to bed you know that you go through a lot of healing process your energy your strength is restored certain things happen within your body metabolism that is revived and revitalized it's it's not you that's doing it but it's the lord that's doing it even in this from a perspective of natural things that happen to us as human beings it's by god's grace and his mercy and his love that he renews our strength and so the one thing i was looking at is this um as i meditated on what god is doing in our lives i said god i have to look to you always in terms of every situation and you know what i i i, I recollect um paul paul himself and he's he, he could have looked at his old life and he could have carried the scabs of his own life with him. <laughs> In other words, the, 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 the mark that was upon him, that he was a murderer, that he was a persecutor, he was a, he was a thorn in the flesh of the church, the believers, even to the point that Jesus had to make now. He says, why, Paul, do you persecute if thou me? And <laughs> Jesus took it personal, you see? And uh, so all this, he could have carried the scars of all of that in his ministry as God had separated him and called him. But you know what? One thing Paul did, he committed everything unto the Lord. He cast all his cares upon him. Paul wrote a lot of those encouraging scriptures. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. He recognized that in Christ, that's where he received his true healing, his divine healing. In other words, the sense of insecurity, the sense of fear, the sense of rejection, all those things, all that negativity. He was able to get on top of those negative uh, of those thoughts because satan is an accuser of the brethren and he will always attack your weakest area and so don't you think the devil <laughs> here it is paul paul is saul at that time is is in allegiance though he's a religious man he's doing it with passion but he's sincere but he's sincerely wrong in his passion that he's killing the believers but yet god will look uh, so the devil after his conversion, don't you think he was persecuted by his past? The thoughts would come into his head. Oh, every person that he would encounter, as they looked into his face, didn't you think they would be thinking, but well, you killed my brother, you killed my cousin, you killed my mother, you killed my relation. Don't you think he would? all this would have been bombarding it? It would have been easy for him to shrink back in his ministry and just say you know what i ain't going out there because i've got so many enemies out there but he was bold as a lion 
and he went out there and he faced what was coming against him. And he was able to say, um, one, I count not myself to have apprehended. In other words, I haven't arrived. I haven't come to the fullness of all what Christ, Christ has for me. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching out to those things which are before, I press towards the mark of the higher calling in Christ Jesus, it's in Christ Jesus. So see, he focused on Jesus. His high calling was in Jesus. So it elevated him beyond his, the stigmas that would have been attached to him. It elevated him be, um, beyond the feeling of self-condemnation and guilt and shame. It, it, it elevated him beyond fear and insecurity. All those things that the devil would have been bombarded with, bombarding him with, it elevated him beyond that because he was able to say, in weakness, though I am weak, yet in Christ, I am strong. And that was the important thing. And so he met, approached each day as a new day. Though what my outward man perish, in other words, I'm stripping myself of my reputation. I'm stripping myself of, my, of the guilt. I'm stripping myself of anguish and all those things i'm going to strip myself though my outward man perish my inward man christ in me the hope of glory is being renewed day by day and it's it's a testimony to each and every one of us that we, we go through a process we go through a metamorphosis that the beauty of christ should come out of us even though we got we um we go through many trials and many tribulations god we see when you when you get a fruit say like an orange and the fruit is uh, the orange is squeezed what comes out of it <laughs> the juice <laughs> the, the true substance comes out of it when you when you are squeezed when you are challenged the true substance of who you are must come out and that's christ in you who is your hope of glory and um i'm just here to encourage you because the reality is this Whatever you do, you've got to cast your cares upon him. And the word of God says this, and, and this is of my, my encouragement to you. And one of the things is that I've come, um, because of Grace's situation and circumstances, she's not able to do all that she normally does because she started a new job. So... I know that she's been reaching out to some of you in respect of doing a platform, but um, I recognize that when she's not able to do something, certain things that burden of responsibility falls on me. That's no problem. But let me here say this, is that you're all here. And as the, the Spirit of God has um, directed um, this morning, and uh, Seema has opened up and she's shared, and, and Keith has responded, um, Juno has responded, and uh, Donna has responded in many respects. This is a platform for each and every one of you. And I really just feel that we just need to pray into certain areas and remind ourselves of who we are in Christ and remind ourselves that God is with us and God is for us. I'm going to read what God laid upon my heart. And these are the scriptures. And it says, um, if you turn with me, and I, I'm going to decree and declare, I'm going to prophesy over each and every one of you this morning that behold, God is doing a new thing in your life. Yeah. I am the Lord that is my name. My glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to carved idols. Indeed, the former things have come to pass. Now I declare new things. Before they spring forth, I proclaim them to you. And so he says, sing to the Lord a new song. In other words, sing something new to the Lord. Sing something that God will celebrate. Sing something concerning his goodness, his love, his mercy, his greatness, his awesomeness. Praise the Lord, in other words. Hallelujah. There's another scripture, it said in, in um, 
in verse in Isaiah 43 and from verse 18, it says, do not remember the former things or ponder the things of the past. Listen carefully. I'm about to do a new thing. Now it will spring forth. The new thing springs forth now. In, in God, it's always a yet praise because it's already done. Even before, call, even before you call, God has already answered. You have just not seen the manifestation of the answer from God. That means having done all to stand, continue to stand and declare the glory and the victory of the Lord. He's doing a new thing. Listen carefully. I am about to do a new thing. Now it will spring forth. Not tomorrow. Now. Whatsoever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. That is a now prayer. That's a now prayer for something that was already established 2,000 years ago. It is now that it's done. Will you not be aware of it? I will even put a road in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, in, dry, in your dry periods when you're, you're struggling. God is saying that he will put a road there. He will give you a path that you, will go, that you should go on. He will create a route for you. Even he will make provision for you even in the wilderness. The wilderness doesn't talk about a desert necessarily. There's in the wilderness, in the solitude, in a sense of where you are and you're thinking, God, who can I turn to? What can I do in this situation? He said he's going to make a road for you. In the wilderness, there are paths that are, are, are made, natural paths that are made. God is making a path, a supernatural path for each and every one of us. And that supernatural path is Christ himself. When we focus on Jesus, Jesus is that path because Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the light. He that cometh from the Father, no one cometh from the Father unto the Father, but by me. We get to the Father through Jesus Christ. And so every time we confront a situation, we have to be able to commit that thing to Jesus and say, Jesus, you take hold of my reins. You show me the way. You show me the path. I know that there is a new path that is presenting itself. He says, um, rivers in the desert and rivers talk about nourishment. It talks about an overflow. It talks about things becoming fertile. It talks about growth. Rivers, when you see water, it talks about a washing away of things and a beginning of new things, restoration in your life. God is saying to you, behold, he's doing a new thing. In this eighth month of the year, August, he's doing a new thing with each and every one of you. And he's telling you to behold it. In other words, look far beyond your natural sight. Beholding is when you're wide open. Oh my God. That's beholding. If you didn't know what behold is. <laughs> my God. <laughs> behold, behold, I do a new thing. When it's an, it, it, it may even take you by complete surprise. That's a new thing God wants to bring into you. He wants to direct you to your thing. My God, this is a miracle. This is a sign. This is a wonder. You've got to be in expectation that this is a new month for you. This is a new beginning for you. You have to have that heart of expectation. That God, this is my, this is, this is the day that the Lord has made that I should be glad and rejoice. What are you glad about? Because God has already done something and he's going to manifest it. So you're counting those things that be not as though they are. There's a sense of expectation that God, why does God do things? Because he wants to show off his glory. He wants to be glorified for it. So when you're going through things, this is not just for you to feel pain and hurt and distress. There's something that God wants to bring to, he wants to let you know that 
he has he had never left you he had never forsaken you he's always been with you and he's for you and so he's bringing you out into a fruitful place where you're going to flourish like the palm tree in other words <laughs> your your leaves will be your leaves will be big the fruit will be ripe and you will be green to the point people may even look at you green with envy and thinking how does he do that? How does she do that? How does she get out of that? Look, God is with us and God is for you. And you might say, but Chris, Pastor Chris, you're eye-falluting. Why do you make everything sound so good? Because it's in the word. What do you want me to do? I'm not, <laughs> not going to bring you to a mortuary. This is not death. Jesus, in Christ, there is life and life more abundantly so i'm going to speak about the life of christ i'm not going to speak about the death that is all around me i'm going to lift up my hands unto the lord from whence cometh my help it's already come and i'm going to receive that help so when i get bad news when i see we walk not by sight but we walk by faith i don't care what it looks like i've got to know but by faith god can and will do things on my behalf, on our behalf. So I'm just encouraging you, saints. It says, I, I'm just going to read this. It's, it's God does this for the beasts, for the beasts of the field. The beasts of the field will honor me. <laughs> Come on. The beasts of the field will honor me. You might think, ah, oh, those beasts, they're dumb beasts. They're animals. How can they honor God? They honor him. When God makes provision for them, they honor him. You might say, how is that? Sometimes you hear cries in the in 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 a forest and cries that I've been to. Look, let me just say something to you. I've been to uh I wouldn't say it's a the Maasai Mara. This is um barren field. This is where all the beasts roam all the animals roam and at certain times you hear all these noises <laughs> and it's a roar and it's a bark and it's a chatter and you're thinking what is going on there and, and i believe that they're honoring god they're honoring god when they find something when they find their prey and they've had a good meal they're honoring god when they find water, they are honoring God. He says, the beasts of the field will honor me, jackals and ostriches, because I have given waters in the wilderness. In the, in the Maasai Mara is dry, yet there's so many animals that thrive in that wilderness. Because I have given waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people whom I have formed for myself will make known my praise. So we ought to make known our praise. God has formed us for himself so that we should make known our praise. That's what the word of God says. Not to lament, but to make known our praise. What do we do? We praise God through the situation. I've often said this, that many things that come against me, you won't hear me lament about it. But you know what I do? I thank God. I praise God. Before long, the situation has changed. If it's not immediate, it changes because God inhabits our praises. And I'm just encouraging us, and I'm really just saying let's see things from a different perspective i'm saying let's see things from a different perspective let's see it from an eagle's perspective when the eagle will mount up his wings when when you mount up your wings as an eagle when you run and you're not weary when you walk and you not, shall not fade we should have an eagle perspective where we are covering everything and we, we are aware of our surroundings. We should be aware of our surroundings, that our surroundings, where our surroundings, 
we we got angels that um we are we we are because we're the heirs of salvation we have ministering angels that are serving us be aware of our surrounding you might say well pastor chris i haven't seen an angel no you don't have to see but you can believe the word of god you have at least two but angels are there. not only that you have christ in you which is the hope of glory and where christ is the father the father is and the holy spirit dwells in each and every one of us who represents the godhead we are not alone that's why the word of god would say greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world there's the greater one dwells in us so if the greater one is in us then he has first hand information of what we're going through first hand is there with us all the time and so by virtue of that we can take cognizance of that to know that we're not going through it for ourselves and i'm so glad because you know what for to this morning because seema's what she did she confessed what she was going through the Bible says, confess your faults one for another. Pray one for another that you may be healed. For the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man is dynamic in all its working. In other words, it solicits change. In other words, something must happen. There must be the dawning of a new day, a new something has to change. There has to be a change in your situation. And I believe that some things are done because I mentioned because this is where God wants to bring us to to a point where we truly acknowledge Him, in spite of what we got, in spite of how it feels. And even as um, Ephesians one three says, we should count it all joy. It's not joyful when you're going through it. It doesn't feel like joy. But we count it all joy. There's a purpose behind it. There's a reason God allows these things to happen in our lives. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, trials, tribulations, and testings. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith, work of patience, and perseverance, it, it makes you suffer long. You talk about the fruit of the spirit, long suffering. It brings out the fruit of the spirit. Fruit is something that we have to develop. We have to develop that character. Every fruit that is, that is a characteristic of God shows our love towards God to develop them. Gifts we receive because of God's love towards us, but fruit we develop because we desire to be like God. And so we have to develop that. And so we seek God. We seek his presence. We seek his throne every day to be strengthened like him. To be strength, strong, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Not in our might, not in our own strength, but in his might. So the, the perseverance brings us to the point, point where we're entire. And we're complete in him, Christ Jesus, wanting nothing. In other words, we mature in the character of Christ. It's Christ. Without Christ, we are nothing. So everything happens through Christ. If we just focus on the Christ who is in us, who's indwelling us, we can get over these things. We can get over the situations. In those dry times, we can be watered because Christ is in us. And the word of God says, out of our belly then shall flow rivers of living water. And things that will cleanse us, things that will renew our minds, things that will restore us. It's a process that we go through, but we're strengthened on a daily basis. On a daily basis. Why? Because the fountain of life dwells in, in us, and that's Christ himself. Praise be to God. So I, I just really want us to pray and uh, we just give god thanks this morning um there's so much more that i can say but even second corinthians 17 what does that say
I know what it says, but what does it say? Therefore, we are a new creation. Behold, old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. We are now a new species of being. The God, Jehovah God, has recreated us into his expressed image. Into his expressed image. And so we know that there's something that's happening in the inside of us that says daily we're going into the, growing into the full stature of Christ. And so, yes, we're going to, those baggages, it says lay aside every weight. It, the weight might not be a sin issue, but it says, and a sin that so easily beset our path. That tells me that there's something that we can do because it, the word of God commands us to lay aside. We can lay aside things. We don't have to take the burden upon ourselves. We can lay aside those weights and the sin because a sin is may be a recurrence. It may be something that's habitual, that when you get into a situation, you, 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 you have the same way of dealing with it. God's saying, do a new thing. This is a new day. This is the dawning of a new day. We can do new things and take a fresh approach to our walk with God in terms of, and I spoke about it before, entering every day with thanksgiving in our hearts. Rejoice, and again, I say rejoice. We have to rejoice. The moment we get into a mode of being hard on ourselves and being down on ourselves and everything else, the, the enemy will impress that upon us. And let me here say again, that the devil knows our weaknesses. That's why he will keep on bombarding us in the same area. We talk about repetition. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't know any new things unless you show him something that is new. And the new thing that you wanna show the devil is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So when he looks at you, he doesn't see you. He sees Christ and says, oh, look out. We don't wanna touch that person. Whoa, no. Don't touch it. Don't go near. The, are you aware? I don't. I, I've said this before. Are you aware that the revelation you have of Christ makes you a dangerous weapon? <laughs> makes you dangerous in the kingdom of darkness because when the devil approaches you, it's not you that is attacking. It's the Christ in you because he wants to snuff out the revelation that Christ is actually living on the inside of you. So he wants you to rely on your feelings and your emotions. He wants you to be up and down like a yo-yo, like a thermometer. He doesn't like thermostat Christians because thermostat Christians, they're constant all the time. Everything is Christ. He says, what? The devil, he wants you to leave Christ out of your fears. So when you don't mention Christ and you mention your conditions continually, he's saying, I've got you now because what you're doing, you're dwelling in your flesh. You're dwelling in your carnal nature. And let me say this, even God said to the devil that you shall feed on the dust of the earth. You're, we're dust. We have a carnal nature. We are dust. So. He, the devil will feed on a human being. Those things that are carnal, those things that are mortal, that's what he feeds on. But we know that <laughs> God pronounced that, that, that the one born of a woman shall crush the head of the serpent. And so we know that Satan is under our feet. And you have to know that the work, it, Jesus said it's finished. 
It's a done thing. It's a done deal. All we need to do is walk in the victory of that done deal. Praise be to God. I'm, I'm just here to encourage you. I, look, that's what was laid upon my heart even before I came to the platform. But it's an affirmation and confirmation that I needed to share with you because I want to encourage you, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Fight the good fight of faith. Lean on the everlasting arms of the Father. Be strong. Hallelujah. We, we're going to pray, but um, Rachel's got her uh, hands up. And uh, so I'm just going to hear from Rachel first. But I want this to be an opportunity where can, we can pray into the different areas. And if you have needs, if you find that you're, you are struggling in a particular area, please, this is an open forum this morning that we can pray into them. Also, um, we have a song that uh, Keith wants to minister. So, um, Rachel, go ahead. Thank you, Pastor Chris. Um, this morning, I was, I was something on my mind like the wounding. I was dealing with wounding, const, constant wounding, and um, the psalms that I read, and I thought I heard something, and you just all of you comment one by one, one by one. It's just put it in place, and so just like a new revelation for me. So you said about new things. I just thought I'll speak up. So this was the psalm that I opened up to and I was reading and I stopped at verse 4. So the psalm 70, it says, save me, O God. Lord, help me now. I want it now. So, so it starts, that psalm starts off with now I want help. Save me, Lord. Now, come to me now. And then also, if you look at the end of that psalm, it says, I am so weak. I'm so poor. Come to me quickly. Oh God, come to me so quickly. And uh, bang in the middle. This was the verse that I thought I heard. I, I heard, heard. May all who come to me. This is verse 4. It's bang in the middle of that verse. Psalm 70. It's a small short psalm. Bang in the middle. is There's a verse saying. May all who come to you be glad and joyful. And I looked at her and I thought. What? You want me to just put on a jumper every morning? When I'm sad and worried and needing saving. And that's exactly what the Lord was trying to say. You have to choose to be glad and put on the jumper of joyfulness and thankfulness. And that's that's been portrayed by Rafa. Pastor Jay said, time is needed, Rachel. Time is needed. Such a deep wound you've been getting for such a long time. Time is needed. And then and Pastor Raphael comes on and says, be still and know that God is God. Be still and know, let God do what he needs to do. He is God, not you. So be still. So Pastor Raphael, Pastor Chris come in, come in and just gave everything else and collected all those together and said, be thankful. Take time. Allow God to do a new thing. He's trying to do a new thing before you could carry on in your own sadness and carry on right in the middle of your sadness. God said, you think he's wanting you to get, Rachel, is to purposefully to choose to want to be glad because those who come to God and those who are believers, you, you have a different perspective. You know it will all be all right in the end. So choose glad and be joyful. And just thought I would share that before I run off to Bromley. So I'm rushing. This is my Bromley day to go and spend some time. So I've been doing adventurous trips to Bromley and that landed me with the well, in one day, voluntary work for five hours. So who would have thought after seven years I would be testifying with that? So that's tomorrow. So tomorrow also I won't log in because I need to leave early. So I just need to be out of the house at least nine. So, so I just thought, hope you got that. 
Thank you. So Psalm 70, I'll just read the whole Psalm 70. It starts off with, come and save me, Lord, now. Save me, O oh God, Lord, help me now. May those who try to kill me be defeated and confused. May those who are happy because of my troubles be turned back in disgrace. May those who make fun of me be dismayed by their defeat. May all who come to you, so Lord, so you are coming to me, Rachel. You are already a believer. So I've already established everything that you need. So just put on a jumper of gladness and just go out there and see how that new thing works out for you. So I thought I'd share that. And the next verse is, may all who are thankful for your salvation always say how great God is. God is still great. He's still on the throne. He hasn't fallen off. He's still in control. And I am weak and poor. Yes, I know you are weak and poor, Rachel. Come to me quickly, O oh God. You are my savior, Lord, and hurry to my aid. And Lord is trying to say to me, I know you want me to come to your aid, but I'm trying to tell you a new thing. Put on. When you don't feel like putting on a joyful garment of thanks and praise, put it on and practice it anyway and see if that changes the temperature of your situation. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> praise be to God. <laughs> Praise be to God. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel, for that contribution. Bless you. Bless you. And uh, this, I'm so, you know, the joy of, uh, you know, seeing Rachel in this mood and attitude. She is venturing out. Um, uh, you said you're doing your shopping or something. You're venturing out anyway into the community and neighborhood. But the reality is that, um, I remember a time when that was an awesome undertaking for Rachel. There was, it was, it, it was what came was fear and trepidation, a sense of, can I do it? Questioning, doubt. And so she, I can sense the joy and the expectation of her having this opportunity to go out, you see, and, and that's the progression. And uh, and uh, so I'm thankful, but everything is is a process, and some processes are uh, now. Now I do a new thing; it's immediate. Some things are take time, but it's still everything's still a process. As you read in the Bible, many people they receive their healing instantly. Some even Jesus had to, uh, you know, when he was ministering to the blind man, he had to spit on it and said, "What do you see? I see it." men as trees walking and then he had to do it again uh, so to speak and uh, it's only then that he could see clearly and sometimes things just are not always immediate but the reality is that there is progress there is results you're going forward you see and even if you step backwards you only step backwards to go relaunch and go forwards you see, it's like um, it's like a, a long jump or, or, or someone who does a triple jump and he's there and he's hovering on his spot and then he sort of rocks backwards and he rocks forward and he rocks backwards and he rocks forward and then he goes for it and he gallops <laughs> at speed. The, the quicker he gallops, the more height or the, 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 the energy that he, he um, he gains from the speed at which he's galloping enables him to launch off from the board and to get reach far distances. And sometimes we have to rock back in certain cases only to go forward, to rock back, to go forward. And then we have to begin to go forward at speed in the things that God has promised us and leap, take a faith, take a leap of faith in the things that God has promised you and see where you will end up see where you see how far you will go and that's really what it is that this is our walk of faith is that we walk not by sight but we walk by faith in that in ultimate trust in god that when he tells us to do something he, he positions us 
we take the initial steps and God works with us. God's working with us to confirm his word through us with signs following. But we have to position ourselves and we have to do something. So it's just not a matter of sitting there. Waiting in a sense of God is not waiting as in just sitting down there doing nothing. But waiting is like a, a waiter in a restaurant who is who's he's got his uh you know he's got his apron on he might have a suit suit uniform on but he has a tray in his hand he's got a a, 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 a towel or um something over it i forgot what you call it now <laughs> but he has something over it and then what happens then he's saying is there anything i can give you sir is there any way I can serve you. Is there anything that you need right now? You're forever looking for opportunities to give something, to reach out to that person in service. That's what waiting is. So in your time of seeming quietness, what you're not quite doing nothing, folding your hand and waiting for everything to drop out of the sky, but you actually, your heart is focused towards Christ and you're saying, now what, what are you saying to me, Lord? In other words, you're at the ready so that when the Holy Spirit prompts you, you're able to respond immediately. And in responding, and then God confirms his word through you with size following. If you're talking about new beginnings, that's what new beginnings is. Always being on the ready to do what God instructs you to do. And when you do that, you see things unfolding in your life and you just say, that is super natural. That is beyond the natural. That's the realm that God work, works in. He works in the realm of the supernatural, which requires faith, complete trust and a leaning on him. And this is so let us not um, lean on or depend on man, but let us lean, continue to lean on the everlasting arms of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, or the arms of God. Praise be to God. I'm just going to um, ask Keith to the, um, minister that song if he's still there. And then we, afterwards, so we're going to just pray. As he said that the song is appropriate. And I'm just going to ask Keith if you're available to just minister that song. And then afterwards, we're going to go into areas of prayer. We're going to pray one for another. This is a new season. I believe this is a dawning of a new day and a new season. I believe that the anointing will, is here to remove every burden and destroy every yoke of the enemy. And uh, go ahead, Keith. Amen. 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 It's a new season. It's a new day. It's a new season that is coming my way. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. And I just uh, reiterate again, as Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 says, Do not remember the former things or ponder on the things of the past. Listen carefully. I'm about to do a new thing. Now it will spring forth. Now it will spring forth, forth. Praise be to God. So I just really want us to really just pray into this particular era. And if you, any of you feel led to pray and lead in this particular prayer, you know, there's so many facets of this prayer. It, it can be to, it can be on a personal level where you find that uh, you're struggling in particular areas. In your personal walk with God, in terms of quality time, you, you're finding yourself distracted um, by things, everyday things. You not you haven't can't spend time. You don't spend time in prayer and devotion as you should. Um, you find that your your there's battles in your mind and your emotions. You're battling in your mind and your emotions, and you you just need to be more focused. There's there's a sense of uh, um, struggle in terms of your commitment level to God first and as a result you're struggling in your daily walk in terms of uh, 
committing to accomplish things in, in terms of uh, things that you believe that God is telling you to do and things that you may, there may be things in your life that are outstanding, but every time you look to do it, you seem like you're not getting anywhere first. And you know that you need to present your, you, your day first to the Lord or your time first to the Lord and commit everything first to the Lord. Um, there's other things you might, in terms of relationships, you have, you're struggling with your relationship, re, with your relations, whether it be your children or even your siblings or even relations at work or relations in the community. And so you're having a struggle with it. God wants you to take, have dominion over those situations. He wants you to take the rule, govern those situations. You may be struggling financially and you're thinking, God, I don't know how I'm going to get through this week. I don't know how I'm going to get through this month. I don't. So that, in other words, there are things that you may feel that God has impressed upon your heart that you, you need to do. But let, let me here say that God always, and I've known it to be true, God has always made a provision for me where he's given me vision. God is always enabling, and it's always an act of faith, stepping out, not waiting until I receive the resource, just believing in the source. The Father God, Jehovah God, has been my answer to establishing, God establishing things in my life. And there, there are supernatural and miraculous things that at the end of the day, I, I'm not responsible for it. I give all the glory to God because I can have a testimony and say, that I don't even know how I did it or I accomplished it. But I know, I know it was God. That's the greatest testimony that you can ever have. And so I, I really want us to enter into a time where whatever we're going through, believe this is a new season, believe this is a new day. This is the eighth month of the year. And I've designated it. A, a, this, is, this is a season of new beginnings. This is, behold, God is saying to me, behold, I'm doing a new thing, a new thing. God is writing a new chapter in your life. And you have to see that it is now, now. Hallelujah. Bless you. Keith, I'm just going to hand over to you. Um, I just had the bell ring and uh, Grace has just left. So I'm just going to hand over to you. So go ahead. Um, I'm just going to go straight into prayer as instructed. And... <sighs> Heavenly Father, Lord, I come to you repentant of situations and circumstances that are weighing me down, that where I learn to examine myself, I realize my fault. And for that, Lord, I apologize. And I am regretful for the time that I've spent. That's deluded me from the time I should spend with you, oh God. In my broken downness and my state of brokenness, you are speaking. And there are things that I'm longing, Lord, just to get out of the way or to accomplish. The Lord, forgive me of the way that I have restrained what you have taught and shown me that where my calamity of, of confusion is presented itself always persistently there. The headaches that I have generated, Lord, bless me and forgive me for the way that I have made it. The decisions and the conversations that I'm just trying to illustrate my reality. But Lord, you don't long that to be. Because you are a good God. And I'm needing understanding even in my own process. I'm needing understanding because, Lord, you don't have to give it to me. You could just keep walking and keep me and teaching me to keep walking. But, Lord, I am struggling with it. Your word says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, Lord, I would long to get out of this valley. It's persistent and it's consistent. And it's just long and long when I think I'm getting over a hurdle. I'm struggling in it, Lord. 
the amount of businesses that you have grafted me, but Lord, I'm using said business to, to develop this new one that you have given, but Lord, wow. I'm struggling with the, the insurmounting finances. I'm being schemed and scammed and, and people have taken money out of my bank account or, or trying to utilize the credit card, which funnily enough is overdrawn, but yet they still try it on four occasions. Lord, help me to just get past all of this. Secure me, oh Lord, in the cleft of your wing, that everything is impervious to me that could bring itself to me. It will no longer have function. Lord, the struggles of my family, and it's not that I hate them, I don't get them, I don't understand them. And the more that I try to interact, the more I feel invisible. The more I feel like I'm, I'm just, I'm just there. But Lord, I struggle to witness what you're longing for me to witness. So I speak scriptures that bring me moments of comfort, but it just seems to be so surmounting the struggles or the processes that it's like pretty much most people that I know have, but I don't. And I talk of, of the, their suffering and, and I pray for them, Lord. I generally pray for them, but Lord, it's like when you don't understand the, the grafting of jealousy and envy that I have to battle on a daily basis. It keeps me up at night. Lord, my birthday soon to come up, but Lord, I didn't want to be faulty. So I know it's your plan, whatever it is. I didn't want to be faulty by the time I could have a child. But even then is a waiting period because we know, Lord, my finances aren't great at all. You've given me dreams and goals, but Lord, I don't know how to pursue them, but I know that I have to have confidence in you. I know that if I start the ball rolling, you will just continue it going like an avalanche. You will continue it going. You've given me visions, but I don't see how it's going to come to pass. And Lord, help me, oh Lord, to change these ways. This grafting of, of wanting a family is so drawn in me. Sometimes it hurts. I interact with, you know, children and, and talk to them and play with them. And, and it's like you even give me the ability to listen, <laughs> to, to even hear what they're talking. It's like I can work it out, like universal translator. But Lord, it is when I go home, I don't want to be in this position I'm in anymore. I'm tired of it, restrained by it. It's like even mistakes are others, but Lord, it is like a burdening and a burning of myself. Teach me in the way that I should go in this position, in this discompensation, in this place that I reside in. Tormented because it's holidays. Now where everybody's doing things and I just want to just curl up and not get up. You've even given me a dog, so I, 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 I love to walk her, but it is heavy. I just want to turn around and return back to my safe zone, but there is no safe zone here. Why? Because there's children everywhere. I need your help with this jealousy, Lord. I need your help with this reassuring peace that I read about constantly that surpasses all understanding. I don't want pretty words that people are telling me in the future. Lord, I just need you to speak, not through them, but directly, because it hurts. These doctor's appointments, it hurts. This confusion, it hurts. And you are not the God of confusion. The weight of people's words is tumultuous. And we don't see these things, Lord. Even though they have good intent, the weight of it is a lot. Teach me how to swallow what is what you're feeding, Lord. Teach me how to graft into the midst of what is, is, is concerning me. I don't long for mistakes, but Lord, I can't take the position where I am. I keep busy because this helps me. So Lord, in the helping, 
whatever way or whatever means. I don't want to be a, 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 a type of human that only sees it in the way that I perceive it. So, Lord, I pray for your, your speech to be so bold, so clear, to be beyond what is typical. Even if people feel uncomfortable, I've got to open up. I've got to relent this weight, Lord. So I'm asking you, remove this burden from above me and speak unto me to what is necessary. The tears that I cry are persistent, consistent, and it's not that I don't know what I'm crying for. It's just hard to speak to people about it. Because I don't want people to feel guilty for what they are blessed with. I don't want people to feel down, but it is so heavy. And I can't swallow this pill, Lord. I can't take it. It's a lot. This potential relationship. There's so much fear there. There's so much fault with me. But I know you're healing from 29 to 27. I know you're healing, but Lord, I don't want to make a mistake. I don't want to use anybody, even this potential relationship, so I can find out whether I work. Lord, you know my thoughts on, on having a child. You know that just the one child but because of everything that's going on, I know that I've got to have faith. I know that I've got to yearn and first after you. And Lord, I do constantly, but I don't want it to be filled with tears and panic and annoyance, frustration. I thank you, Lord, for, for how you do things, even if I can't understand it, because your ways are above my ways. Your ways, I've not, managed to speak to one person even though you have grafted me around great people I've not managed to speak to one person who has which of, is obvious has one iota of what I face because it's I hear what people say but there's more to what's going on I want to listen to you, oh God, even through people. You're not impossible in your ways. You are reached far beyond what we even know. What I even know. Even if the answer is no, Lord. I have decreed, I have declared, I have fasted. I've done things that are common to man. But Lord, I just need that doorway, that just that doorway. To know what to do. Know how I'm going to be. You know of every facet, Lord. You even know what is going to be spoken unto me. You know of every illustration. I just long for your presence consistently. I go back and I listen to pre-recordings of what we've done. What I've I managed to upload. I listen again and again. And I'm asking and requesting for you, Lord, to just come down like you did with Adam and Eve, to come down and sit with me. Even the fact I don't work. Many people only pray for my help, but there was so much more. There is so much more. Things I can't do, I'm not doing. Things that I would love to do, but it's just such an ask. I continue to ask. I want to be able to do for people instead of, oh man, I don't have, Lord. I can't do that, Lord. You know that I long to get driving. And Lord, I, I just want to be able to do. Even if I'm miserable, but I can still do for your people. I can still do, but that doesn't illustrate joy. I'm just sidestepping. And I don't long to be sidestepping any longer. I don't want to be the person who has to consider even something so simple for others. But I have to sidestep it and be glorious into whatever comes next. My whole life I've skipped. Being 36 and only starting to socialise. Still in that little boy, not knowing. I don't want to be like this anymore, God. I can't take it. 
It's overbearing. It's like I have to learn now what I should have learned. But Lord, you have your reason why you protected me. But even in that protection, I still feel so vulnerable. It's the lack of knowledge. So I ask and what people don't understand is while I'm talking to people, I'm listing things so that I can research because it's like I'm so behind. It's like getting a hospital letter and you don't have a clue what those letters mean. Those letters mean. So you have to find out. But then I have to realize that what is left such a weight when you find out it's such a weight when I'm invited to go places and I see things going on and it's such a weight but I'm not going to stop because I've got to discover the shell life living in the pit the mental prison I will still not know Lord, for this relationship, I'm like, wow, how am I going to, what am I supposed to? Most people have an illustration when you, you might go out with somebody or you might meet up with somebody. There's a level of knowing what they, they, they're doing. I'm lost, so I become silent at times and I'll talk just to keep myself from the silence. But Lord, sometimes I can't stop. Because I'm scared of what, when I leave, silence, back to the silence. Lord, I need your help. I need your help. Because there's so much more that I long to pray for and I will keep doing this. I will keep persisting in this. I will keep yearning in this. Filter into me, Lord, like I'm... Help me to study myself. Help me to examine myself even beyond what's on the surface, even beyond what my desires are. Because that's not all that it is for me, Lord. It's your will. That's the most important thing. But I can't read your mind, God. I can't. So I read your word and, and it helps me for the moment and I'm I'm wanting more than just for the moment. It's not happiness I seek, it's joy because your word doesn't speak much on happiness, but it speaks continually on joy. And that's what I'm longing to be despite if the answer is no. The algorithm for me is not the same as everybody else. And in that I seek you. I close this prayer in thanks. I close this prayer in what? you're going to do next. I'm no longer embarrassed to be bold, Lord. So what's the next step? To speak out on things that may even make others uncomfortable. I'm no longer that shackled boy that is dying to get out. And I thank you for that, Lord. But now I'm starting to get out. There's more shackles. And there's way more shackles than I can admit. It's a lot. Free me from these things, God. And I thank you, Lord, what you're doing and how you're doing it, comfort or not. I seek you, Lord. I seek you. I want to step out onto the water and keep going where Peter failed. I want to keep going beyond all. I want to discover things and like... <laughs> driving in this country and traveling to places. I've got a massive list, places I want to visit. Lord, step in into my life and I thank you for stepping in. I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for every opportunity, every doorway. Just ask you to help me, Lord. Amen and amen. Amen. Um, Amen. Praise be to God. And Keith, you know, that's a heartfelt prayer. And I know that that would have registered with every single person on this platform. And if it's not one aspect of your prayer, it's another aspect of your prayer that would have registered with somebody and everybody. And uh, 
God, God hears your cry. And, um, and I believe that your footsteps are ordered. The one thing you can say, Keith, is that I'm still here. And as you rightly said, you know, you're, you're still here and you're here for a purpose. And there is a testimony that is coming. The testimony is already here and you're testified by virtue of what your, your prayer is a testimony of the fortitude and the strength that you have in your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As you were, <clears throat> as you were praying, and this goes, this word come, goes to everyone, and I know that you know this scripture, but we're talking about new beginnings. We're talking about a new season, doing a new thing in the Lord. And uh, Jeremiah 29, and verse 11 and going downward says, for I know God knows the plans and thoughts that I have for you, says the Lord, plans for peace and well-being and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call on me and you will come and pray to me. And I will hear your voice and I will listen to you. Then with a deep longing, longing, you will seek me and require me as a vital necessity. And you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. And as I said, it's, it's, it's giving of yourself into totality and say, look, I'm putty. I'm clay in God's hands. You form me. You glaze me. You use me, Lord. Let me be, be prepared for what you have ordained before the foundation of the world. And sometimes, and as I spoke, uh, I think it was Sunday, I think it was um, a talk about <clears throat> bearing the cross. We all have a cross to bear, and our crosses are different. But one thing I do know, God will not have us to be tempted or try above that which we're able to bear but with the trial and the temptation that we go through with the testing that we go through he'll always make a way of escape there's nothing that is uncommon to man and so what is uncommon to you is uncommon is is common to somebody else god knows the limits of our own strength but he knows that his grace is sufficient to keep us more than sufficient. His grace, his mercy, his tender heartedness, his loving kindness and his favor. We not, may not always intimate in the same vernacular or the same language in terms of how we express things, but we go, all go through something. We have to, as a child of God, every single one of you will go through something. If you don't, then you have to question whether you're a child of God because the enemy is out there and he will fight and he will battle you. And the first place he will battle you is in your mind. The battleground of your life is your mind and your heart. And I hear the hearts of so many of you, so many people I've heard the heart of, but I know that God's promises are yea and they're amen and they're so be it. And I know that is a faithful God. His mercies are new every morning. And I'm not saying it because it's just in the word of God. I know that God is a faithful God. He's faithful to his word. We, we don't serve a God that will lie. God is incapable of going against his word. And so I continue to proclaim God's word, knowing that that is your strength. That is your strength. Each and every one of you this morning, you have to have the foundation and that foundation is in the revelation of who Christ is. Who is he to you? What does he mean to you? We've got to stand on no other foundation but Jesus Christ himself. That is the equalizer in everyone's life. Christ is an equalizer. None of us are better than the other, but we, we're all equal in Christ. Doesn't matter where we come from, doesn't matter what we've been through, it doesn't matter who our appearances, or our heritages, Christ is the equalizer. 
Christ is the equalizer. And Christ paid the price for each and every one of us. But there's a glory. If in this life we had hope only, we would be of men most miserable. But we know our hope is not just in this life. God is gracious, God is loving, he's merciful and he's kind. And uh, as um, Raphael has uh, got his hand up, I'm just gonna direct us. Go ahead, Raphael, go, go oh, ahead. Good morning, saints, good morning, people of God. It's a wonderful morning, it's a pleasant morning. Oh, I love this. Yeah, um, I was just um, reflecting on what you just said earlier, uh, Pastor Chris, on the number eight. And it's funny, I was speaking to somebody earlier this week about, um, over the weekend actually, about uh, the number eight, God works with numbers. And sometimes we don't really look at that because God works with numbers. Jesus in the grave for three days, 40 years uh, in the wilderness of Israel, 40 days, Jesus fasted in prayer, uh, Moses in the desert, you know, it, it going to his fast or preparation, 40 years, uh, and so on and so on and so on. And God uses number seven, we know. You know, God uh, created heaven and the earth, and you rested the seventh day. Anyway, the point is, God works with numbers, and this month is a year of new beginnings. Now, before we can move into new beginnings, the first thing the Lord said to me was, "Clean out the house, get rid of the old first. I'm not going to put new stuff in in, in a dirty house." Amen. So, <laughs> it doesn't, you know, we, we we need to look at that. God is never going to give us anything new if we still hold on to the old. That is spiritual and also as it is in the physical. Okay. And so one of the things the Lord is speaking to me about this month is Raphael. Before you move into the new, deal with the old. Get rid of the old. If I would if I used to moan and complain, Raphael would stop moaning and complaining because that's not going to get you anywhere with me. Okay. And Amen. I used that phrase earlier about digging at the scab. I, I've got, a, and, I, and I heard what Brother Junior said and what others have shared, and I've got a, a scar here where, where a Stanley knife had gone through my left wrist, and, and I almost bled, bled to death, but thank God he delivered me. But anyway, he saved me. But um, the scar is to remind me never to cut, your, uh, cut anything towards your body, always cut away from me. I, I never forget that. I cut a piece of hardboard towards me, and it left me the scar. And up to this day, I never forget how I did it and how important it is when you're using a knife or any instrument to cut away from your body. Anyway, the point is, there uh, recently I got a little cut in my hand and I kept digging at it because it's, it's you know, as I think Ms. Junior said about the moisture. I the skin was on it and it wasn't healing quickly enough, so I peeled the skin off. I cut the skin off so the sun can get to it, to, to, so it can dry quickly and heal quicker, and it did. But in the process of the healing, it's itching, and I started to pick at it, pick at it, you know, remove this, the, the layer of the scab, because this is a normal human uh, body that uh, it forms to, to bring healing. And I started digging at it because it was itching, and it took longer to heal. Now, what am I saying is that the, the quicker we allow God, hallelujah, to, to take charge of every situation of our lives, the quicker we'll get our healing spiritually, the quicker we will see the blessings flowing into our lives, the quicker we will see things begin to change. Because you see, God has a plan, God has a purpose, and he does it in his time, because he does work in time. All right, he does work in time. He has a, a, a clock, his clock, and he works by his clock, not by our clock, but his clock. Now, before I shut my mouth, and I'm gonna pray, Philippians 3, verse 14 and 15 tells us, let us press forward to the mark of the higher calling, uh, which is in Christ Jesus. Let's press towards that goal. God has a goal for us, and we need to press towards that goal. So it doesn't matter what happens. And uh, I think the sister Seema put a scripture up concerning where Paul says, uh, let us look at the things that are eternal, not don't look at the things that are temporal, because the things that are temporal, obviously, uh, will perish. But it's the things that are eternal that's going to last forever. All right? And so I'm going to press forward. We need to press forward to the goal in Christ. What is that goal? To be like Jesus. On my goal, our goal should be to, we want to be like Jesus in this world. We want to make sure that we're ready for heaven. We want to make sure that our lives are in line with God's word and that we are ready when Jesus comes. And even before he comes, 
that we are really, really, ready to fulfill his purpose in our lives. That's very important. That should be our goal. And we have many goals in life, but our ultimate goal is to make our heaven our home and our family. Amen. So, Father, I just want to thank you and bless you this morning. Regardless <laughs> of what happens in our lives, you have a purpose for us. For all the apostles, Peter, James, John, every one of them went through trials and testings. So even Peter says, don't find it strange concerning the fiery darts that has come, but it's for the trying of our faith. And that when this uh, experience is past, the glory of God is going to rest upon us so heavily. And so we accept it. Well, I accept it boldly. I accept it, Lord, knowing that uh, trial will come, testings will come, things will happen. But the thing is, in it, you show forth your glory, your power in this vessel. Paul says that we have this earthen, we have the heavenly treasure, the earthen vessels, that the glory will not be of us, but the glory is of God. If man, man will see that it is God. Hallelujah. We will understand it's nothing to do with us, but it's God, because we have the heavenly treasures all in earthen vessels. Hallelujah. And so, Father, we are just dust, dirt, clay made by you. Hallelujah. And without you, we will, we will never survive. Without you, we will never stand. Without you, we will not last. But because of you, we will last. Hallelujah. Because of Jesus, we have eternal life. And so this morning, Father, let us press forward to that mark. Let's press forward to that goal. Let us press forward to that which is in Christ because that's what's important. Hallelujah. And Lord, let us not look at the things that are temporal. Those things that we see around us will perish. Ah, uh, but it's the things that are eternal that will last forever. The heavenly things, the love of God, the joy, the peace that we have that come from heaven, that Jesus has given us. These things are eternal. Ha! Ah, uh, we thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. We thank you, Father. Yes, for all the great and wonderful things we have that is eternal. We look to those things because it is the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. We can't find joy in the things of the world. We cannot find joy in the material things. We cannot find joy in wealth and, and, and all those things that the world offers us. But our joy is in you. Hallelujah. We are made to hallelujah. Our joy, our fullness of joy is in you. And so this morning, Father, let us press forward to that mark. Let us press, let us go forward looking to the offer and the finisher of our faith, which is Jesus Christ. And so, Father, I thank you this morning for all the words that have been shared on this platform this morning. Lord, to take us into another level with you. And we thank you, as uh, Chris had said this morning, that uh, this is a new season, new things are coming, new things, new things, new things. And just one more thing, Lord, have you put us in again, Revelation chapter 12, verse 12. Satan, hallelujah, has been cast out hallelujah and he knows he has come down with great wrath great anger because he knows that his time is short and so we thank you father that we know our time is short here on earth we know that your coming is so close hallelujah and so we don't have time to to, 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 to be caught up with the things of the world and and, 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 and we, we just want to know that we are pleasing you. We just want to know we're living for you. We just want to know that you are pleased with us because the Bible says that the, the just shall live by your faith. And what pleases you is that without faith, it is written that without faith, it is impossible to please God. And we're going to live by faith because we are just people. And we're going to live, hallelujah, to please you and you alone. And so, Father, we thank you and we bless you this morning for such a word. Uh, that we've received, that this season is a season of blessings. This season is a new beginning. And so let us rededicate, let us renew our, our relationship with you. Let's renew Haba, all glory to God. Yes, let us renew ourselves in you this morning, that we can have the blessings of God flowing through us as it should be. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Raphael, for that heartfelt prayer. And uh, again, it's just reiterating um, that uh, we all, we're all gonna go through trials and tribulations or some type of testing, but it's only that the glory of God might be expressed in and through us to his glory. And so that's the important thing. Um, and uh, Vivian, I'm gonna come, come to you. I'm just gonna read this as I'm here. But I'm going to come to you 
And the, the, the word, again, I have to go back to the word. I always go back to the word. And um, Philippians 4, verse 4, says, rejoice in the Lord always. That's not conditional. <laughs> That's one thing I know. It's not conditional. It said always, in spite of, in respect of, always. I don't care how it feels. Always rejoice in the Lord. Always delight, take pleasure in him, in Christ. Again, I will say rejoice. So what, how are you going to fight of the devil? When you're eulogizing, when you're thanking God. When you're rejoicing in the Lord, when you feel downcast, when you feel depressed, when you're confused in your mind, how are you going to cast all that, uh, all that care upon him? When you rejoice, <laughs> rejoice in the Lord always. <laughs> and he says, uh, I'm just going to read down. He says, let your gentle spirit, your graciousness, unselfishness, mercy, tolerance and patience be known to all people the lord is near so your tolerance what you're suffering let it be known to all people your gentleness they're aware that you're going through things but let it be known to all people let god be glorified through you let it be known let this light in you so shine before men that they may see your god works your god behavior and come to glorify the father that's what he's talking about here do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, every circumstance and situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving. Sometimes you can, you can lament, but it's not with thanksgiving. It's like, woe is me, Lord. Oh, I'm done, done. Oh, what? You, you, we can lament, but I said with thanksgiving. Continue to make your specific requests known unto God. God wants us to be get detailed about it. specific requests. That means de don't 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 pass over something and take it lightly. If you, there is a need, give it to God, but give it to Him joy. Share it with the Lord joyfully. And the peace, and this is what happens as a result of that. And the peace of God, that peace which reassures the heart. That peace which transcends all understanding. In other words, there's a peace that will come over you and you think, why am, I, why am I at peace? You're at peace because Christ has become the center of your heart. He's on the throne of your heart. The peace of God. Your mind doesn't come into it anymore. It's the peace that reigns in your heart. And this is Christ himself. And the peace which stands guard over your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's the thing that will reassure you, that peace that comes from the Lord. And he says in verse 8, finally, believers, whatsoever, what, whatsoever is true, whatsoever is honorable and worthy of respect, whatever is right and conform, confirmed by God's word, Whatever is right and confirmed by God's word, whatever is pure and wholesome, whatever is lovely and brings peace, whatever is admirable and of good repute, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think continually on these things, center your mind on them and implant them in your heart. Now, I don't care what, Whatever you can reach out to do, reach out that is good. Whatever is virtuous, whatever is life-giving, whatever brings peace and joy to you, reach out to those things. Not, it doesn't say dwell on anything that is negative. And you might say, well, my pain is real. God's grace is real as well. Jesus is real as well. Jesus is real. He's so real. That is there with you right now. You might not be aware. Is in you right now. The Holy Spirit dwells in you right now. He's real. The peace of God that passes all understanding is real. So he says, center on 
those virtuous, those life-giving things, let, make that your foundation, your bedrock. In Christ, make that your bedrock. And you'll find that the peace, that peace will come to you. That healing will come to you. That prosperity will come to you. Everything that you desire will come to you by the grace of God and through his word. Because God is not a God that he will lie. And I'll take hold of these words. Even to, even when I lay myself down in sleep, or shall I say, when I sleep in the Lord, I will know that I'm at peace with God and I know where I'm going. Be at peace. Be at peace. It's something we have to do daily. Train our hearts and our minds and our mouth to confess the peace of God, the word of God. It brings healing to our souls, to our hearts and our minds, and to our situation and our circumstance. Blessed be the, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of... And you know something, verse 9 says this, the things which you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things in daily life, and the God who is the source of peace and well-being will be with you. Look at the examples in the word. Practice them. Apply them to your life on a daily basis. You might say, that's difficult, that's hard. No, it's just take one step at a time. Exercise them in your life. It will take hold of you. Trust me. Trust the word, more importantly. I know it as a personal experience. I've known it. I've been through some trying times persecuted for things that I have not done misunderstood but you know God is true and he's real God will vindicate you and God will strengthen you as you trust him and put him first praise be to God Vivine go ahead good morning all um, I've sort of drifted in and out to be honest but I've got the full drift of it I've drifted because I landed in Jamaica um Sorry, after very in Jamaica oh. after very delayed flight. Um oh, was meant to leave at one was meant to leave at one forty five, ended up leaving about four thirty yesterday. So a very long day, but you know, just being in the skies and seeing the wonders of God. And it even in up in there I could feel that peace. Just looking at a sunset as of as we flew into Jamaica, coming near to Jamaica. You know, it was daylight all the way, so I didn't sleep at all. Then it was daylight all the way. But when coming near to Jamaica, there was a sunset. And it just, there's a song, How Great Thou Art, that anytime I see certain sceneries coming, it just reminds me of how great our God is. And hence, we don't need even a reason to feel joy because of the heavens that this that our God has created. You know, that in, in itself is joy, even in our saddest and deepest times of loneliness. If you just reflect on what surrounds us, the greatness of what God has created for us, you know, just looking at that alone brings joy, even when your heart may be damp, feeling dampened. Um, but I just thank God anyway. I was sort of putting up my hands to say, I just want to give God thanks that I managed to get away Amen. for the next few weeks. And, um, you know, I'm trusting in God. It's, it's a vacation, but obviously I'm going to keep doing some work over here, um, especially as I'm trying to get bids and that. But I, I just pray that God will guide me. He will be, I always say God is a pen for me. When I'm writing, it's not me writing. It's God is, takes co control. Sometimes what I write, I think, oh, I, I didn't really think about that. You know, God takes control and uses my mind to help me write the things that are important, necessary, and bring that to mind. But yeah, just I pray for God's blessings and that I will, you know, remember Philippians 4, giving thanks always in all situations. You know, the delay to me didn't mean much today. It wasn't irritation or anything. It was just, it happens. Our life happens to us. We've got to learn to cope things that happen because in coping with things that happen with us instead of stressing over them we actually can enjoy God's kingdom more because 
the fact that we can see it happening and still be alive, see it happening and not feel fearful, see it happening and not being distressed, that is us trusting in God. We only become fearful, distressed and that when we are partly trusting, but when you just trust in God immensely, you know, that's where you've given everything over, knowing that all situations, we can bring it before our Lord and he will answer us. And we are to always give him thanks. So this morning, I'll just give him thanks for, you know, the past year has been a change around for me, especially in the sense of going back to self-employed. And I just give our Lord God the thanks and praise that he deserves for carrying me from where I was to where I am and his continuation to carry me to where I am going to be. So give thanks in Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Uh, thank you, Vivian. Um, I can't remember if you said you arrived in Jamaica or, or you're on your way to Jamaica. Um, I, I am. I arrived this evening. Oh, I you arrived about, this evening? Yes. Yeah, I got in about 8, so, um, 8.30 this, in Jamaica time. Yeah. It, it's the clarity of communication that um, confused me because mm -hmm. of yeah, because you're sounding like you're next door to me, you see. So. <laughs> well, praise be to God. And I, I pray that uh, God will fulfill all that your heart's desires according to his will and purpose for your life. And that uh, you bear much fruit. You bear much fruit in every area, every aspect of your life as you're there. How many, how many weeks are you there for? Vivina, are you still there? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Four um, weeks, four. Four weeks, okay. Yeah, four weeks. Yeah. continue to remember you in prayer. I'm just going to pray you. and then I'm just going to close right now. And I, I just thank God for each and every one of you. Um, just mention the reggae girls, by the way, they're playing Columbia right now. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, praise be to God. Yeah, sorry, Pastor Chris, make sure we get some rest of the I spoke to Andrew. He said, "You make sure you get rest." I will do. He did mention he saw you. Thank you, Raphael. Thanks. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, again we thank you. We thank you this and that for this another day that you have made, that we should be glad and truly rejoice within. And Father, we thank you for the many voices and hearts that have been heard this morning. And Father, you have you are the Father of Spirit. And you have access to every heart. You know our divers' needs, our several needs, Father. And you are able to deal with each and every one of us, Father God, because you are supreme. And you are everywhere and anywhere. And you are with us and you are for us, Lord. And so, Father, I just pray and I commit, even as you have spoken loudly about new beginnings. This is a month of August, but eight signifies new beginnings. Behold, you do a new thing. And now, Father God, it will spring forth in the lives of your children. I decree and declare right now. And Father, as they seek you, truly, they will find you, Lord. As they press into your presence, Father God, they will behold the beauty, your beauty, Lord, and inquire with you. Seek direction, divine direction through, from you, Lord. And they will... Their footsteps will be ordered, ordered of them, Father God, for you said in your word you will not withhold any good thing from them that walk uprightly in right relationship with you. And this is the relationship that you th desire, that we seek you first as our vital necessity, as the very source of our life. We seek you as our shepherd, as our daddy, as our guide, as everything. In you, all things consist of, and without you, we can do absolutely nothing, Father. And so, Father, I pray that you minister healing to all those that have been in the hearing of your voice this morning. Through this platform, even as the word has gone forth, your word is life, and your word is light, bringing healing and development to every soul, bringing restoration and vitality, Father. I pray that people will be 
souls will be invigorated this morning. A sense of peace will rest upon them right now, the peace that passeth all understanding. It will be the umpire of their heart, deciding everything that will, they will encounter in their life, Father. Father, that we cast all our cares upon you because you know you care for us, Father. And you're not far from any situation that you go, we go for. In fact, you are there with us. The very footsteps, Father God, mirror your son walking with us, Lord. So we're never alone. And Father, through that, we know that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. In other words, the battle has already been won. And so let us focus on you right now. Focus on your promises, because your promises are yea and amen. So be it. it is already done, Lord. And so, Father, I thank you and I speak healing to every heart. Every heart that is broken, every heart that is heavy right now. Father, I, as they cast their burdens on you, Father, we have responsibility to cast our cares upon you. It's not something we take off, but we must cast it upon you, knowing that you care for us. And so as we apply the actions, there is a reaction from you always, Lord. And so, Father, you will confirm your word through us with signs following. And so, Father, let there be a testimony today of a new beginning, a new chapter in our life, a reset in our life, Father. I have an expectation for a new tomorrow, a fresh tomorrow, a, a tomorrow that will usher in your divine will and purpose in our lives. Father God, that we'll speak as an oracle of you and that we'll minister as ability that you have given us, Father, that we'll be able to minister your manifold grace one to another as good stewards. Father, let it be so, Father God, that our lives are not our own, but it, knowing that it's been bought, purchased with a price, your precious blood has purchased us, Father. So, Father God, I pray that we build on no other foundation this morning, then Jesus Christ and them crucified and resurrected. Father, I thank you. And I speak, Father God, of the healing of the mind and the emotions right now. I decree and declare peace. I come against every high thing right now that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. And I bring every thought right now into captivity to the obedience of Christ, the anointed one, and his anointing that remove every burden and destroy every yoke of the enemy. Every yoke of the enemy be destroyed, whether it be emotional, whether it be mental, whether it be physical, whether it be financial, whether it be material, whether it be relational, whatever that yoke is father it be destroyed right now in the lives of your people as they receive it by faith right now i thank you new and fresh beginnings it will be established it's already established right now this day behold you do a new new thing and yes it springs forth right now in the name of jesus father i thank you for answered prayers right now. I thank you for the harvest as the seeds have been sown over a period of time. Let it germinate, Father, right now into everlasting life. Eternal results right now in the name of Jesus. Let it result in healing, physical, holistic healing right now. Father, I thank you and I decree and declare it done in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that every footstep here amongst your children will be ordered of you, Lord Jesus. Step before them, step beside them, step in them right now as they seek your face first, Father. You will reveal your truth to them and your truth will truly make them free. And Father, with everything, in all things, they will continue to give you thanks and praise and rejoice as your word says and again i say rejoice and followers without with no apology we lift up our hearts unto unto you today we lift up holy hands unto you and we give you thanks and praise this morning for a dawning of a new day a new chapter in our lives and we say father everything you have promised for us is coming to pass 
It is already here right now. And so, Father, whatever we bind now in the name of Jesus, whatever act, activity that is assigned against us, us that is not of you god we bind it now in the name of jesus we resist it we co command those spirits to flee in terror right now in the name of jesus every opposition be silenced right now in jesus name and we decree the favor of the lord upon our lives in the name of jesus father we thank you as we come boldly and confidently onto the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find that grace, that tender heartedness, that loving kindness and that favor truly to help in a time of need. And this is a time of need for each and every one of us. For without you, we are absolutely nothing. And so, Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who rules and reigns in our heart. And he's the one that has justified us through his precious blood. Father, we thank you as I commit this day into your hands. This is Memorial Day. This is a day that we will remember. This is a catalyst of change, Father God, that will be manifest and has manifested itself today. Let there be a new turning in decision making, connecting with people forging relationships that will be life-giving relationships i pray let it begin as from today and let me cast off the dross right now right now let it be cast off in the name of jesus and let your glorious light continue to shine on each and every one of us i pray in jesus name amen and amen Praise be to God.